Hello there, guys. We're live again on Crackbook. And then Amber will be downloading this over in Trinidad and sticking it on my YouTube. What an amazing day so far. Like, absolutely wonderful. The greatest day ever as the police sirens are going on in the background. Will they be coming to my door today? Let's hope not. Um, hopefully, Andrew is going to be here at uh, some point this afternoon. We've got a pizza ready, and we're going to be getting on the sofa and doing a one-on-one -on -one interview. Hopefully, we're going to do it for a watch party. So we're going to have Napa parent alienation this side, forced adoption this side, and we're going to bring it all together in the family courts. And we're going to hope you're all going to join us because he's literally been walking from Essex all the way down to Portsmouth today. He's just gone over to Haven to go and walk over and meet with one of the mums. And um, sorry, Kerry, I completely didn't recognise you. You've even been in my fucking house. Um, and I look forward to the families that are coming together in Portsmouth. We're going to fucking kick their asses, absolutely expand the boxes, bridge the gaps, and force this system to actually enable and support families. Um, I have had an absolutely interesting day today, um, starting with two little ones in the last of their nappies this morning. Yes, I had money in the bank. It was a case of getting out the flat. Did I put two children who were... Uh, intermittently potty trained in the car did I risk clothes getting wet um, and the problem that we have here in Portsmouth is it's a university town so there's only one shop that sells nappies and it's one of them leaky nappies and when you've got 20 quid in your bank do you want to keep going to co-op or do you want to go up to Asda so I then was thinking in the time it takes to go up to Asda if I could get there and back it would be great but who did I get to come and look after my children while I shot up to Asda support so I decided, okay, we are going to go down to co-op and then we're going to go straight down to the courts. The Portsmouth courts is there. <laughs> I literally live adjacent to uh, Portsmouth Hampshire Police Station right there, which is actually moving into its own new building. So I'm looking forward to this being squatted for Christmas. I don't care if you've got security in there, but there's a lot of people out in the streets here in Portsmouth. Yes, I have bingo wings. Um, I'm 41 years old and I have given birth to six children. Um, and then, of course, you've got the magistrates' courts, and then you've got the CP office. And then today, where um, I met up with Andrew and Kerry and a couple of other people, and we saw families going in and out of the courts. And today, the video is out there that we did. Obviously, once I leave, um, I've just literally had the social rang, rang the social worker back who's rang me today because, as you know, somebody had made an out of hours call against me on Saturday. So now it's gone through. They've had a meeting about me. But here's the funny part. I'd, obviously it's the first time I've met Andrew I don't particularly know his case I just had another mum who I know just letting me know there was a paedophilia ca uh, case going on at the time and I'm always aware on whose hands touch my children my eyes and ears and see everything when it comes to my children it's just that I've had six so I'm a lot more qualified in raising kids than somebody who's just starting however I decided to ring my mum today not my mum but my mum Josie uh, just to see if she minded coming across and just being extra eyes while I did the live now the funny thing was is as I rang Josie somebody else answered the phone and said um, I'm outside the civic hall which is where social services is and I just found this phone here's the funny thing the Lord works in wonderful wonderful ways he really does the Lord is the most amazing man he really is all woman all entity or whatever people believe it is um, but the the power of the the laws of the universe um, so literally I rang Josie she'd lost her phone somebody picked it up and she brought it down to the outside the courts and had a brief chat um, with me and I had Josie's phone so anyway, all of a sudden Josie's phone rings and it's a social worker ringing on so Josie's behalf to try to locate her phone. Josie's in a little bit of hysterics. She's lost her phone. She's really nervous. So the social worker rings off her phone and says, <laughs> and I, I, once I knew, I, I know Josie's voice. So straight away, I said, I said, um, Hello, this is Josie's phone. She's lost it. I said, uh, this is uh, somebody supporting her from forced adoption experience. <laughs> I said, Josie's lost her phone. Obviously, you're ringing on her behalf. Is Josie with you? She said, yes, Josie's with me. Uh, I said, hello, Josie. It's Kelly. Um, I said, I've got your phone, love. I said, uh, funny enough, I rang you to see what you were up to. And um, 
I said, somebody's handed me your phone. So um, I'm down at the courts protesting. She, she said, you're what? She said, Don't, I didn't realise that at this particular time, Josie was sat in a call meeting and she was so distracted by the fact that she had lost her phone that you've got the chair and everybody in the middle of Josie's meeting all being a little bit curious that Josie's phone is with somebody for a forced adoption exposed who's outside the courts doing a video. So anyway, Josie said, how long are you outside the courts for? I said, well, I might be here all day, darling. She said, oh, um, she said she was panicking, she was crying, she wanted her phone. So I said, i tell you what, I've got it on me, it's safe, it's not a problem, um, I'll see if we pass and connect it at some point. So anyway, I walked past the civic hall, didn't I? I walked in, I could see Jamie in through the meeting, tap, tap, tap on the door, her Josie's phone, and handed it, meeting all of a sudden crushed and sort of folded out and came out. So anyway, there's me, my legals around this girl, so great relationship with Louise straight away, do you know what I mean? So. Um, social workers, all the partings, everybody's looking. There's about eight meetings going on in this hallway. So I turn around and say, look, how much money do we need for a proper facility for the families here? This is ridiculous. Families can't be sitting in this foyer discussing personal information. So you've got Jamie over one side talking to a social worker and you've got Josie over the other side talking and my kids going to both of the parents. Me being a bit nervous because obviously I know the background and what they've gone through and stuff and me having to safeguard my own children. Elijah then, while we're outside, later on by the way goes and sits right on the bloody bench with one of the alcoholic drunks and says hello <laughs> right in front of everybody um so anyway Josie has done absolutely amazing but when she came out of the meeting she was crying her eyes out so I put my arms around her and obviously it was shown that I know Josie much more than they realize these particular people didn't know me therefore here's the funny part and it just goes to show what this entire system is about. Point proven. So anyway, I interact with Jamie because obviously I've got one solicitor who's talking to both parents as asked and per se. And Jamie is litigant in person. So I am his Mackenzie friend. I'm allowed to discuss and talk with the solicitors. Never been a Mackenzie friend before, so this is going to be interesting. Josie broke down in tears because they are using the amount of moves that she's had against her. Josie has been in the social services care since she was four years old. Josie has been highly sexually, physically, emotionally abused in the care system. Josie is now 17. She's pregnant with an older man. And they have cause, cause, cause and concerns for the level of age gap in this. It's normal for children from foster care to end up in father figure relationships. He's not a paedophile. I tell you what, there's, there's nothing like that between the relationship. I can't ever condone the age, it just doesn't seem right to me, but um, he's not grooming her, he's, he, he's a very good influence on her and he's a lovely man, he really is. Um, but he's on the streets and um, Josie spends a lot of time on the streets with him. He's only allowed at her, her property three times. And um, I talk about them openly because Josie is going to be coming forward. She's probably going to get slammed today, but the solicitors would be all right about it. So anyway, um, we have basically, because they're using all these moves against her, I brought into the front and said, look, if you are bringing accounts of her own experience in foster care against her, therefore we have a legal case against you for neglect and abuse of her, if it is that significant that it's causing concerns with her being a mother. Now there is a law that protects first time mothers with social services that unless there is actual real massive danger, all mothers are given a chance. So they will go to a mother and baby unit. Jamie's gone mad at the moment because she's in a vulnerable situation and he can't be the protector because he can only be there three days a week. They're not going to look at livings. I'm not going to discuss the insides and outsides of her case. All I'm going to say is this is a family that I think deserves a chance. So anyway, as so she, met, she finishes with her social worker, the social worker obviously is a bit of alert to my presence. So I said, oh, sorry, don't, oh, no, let me not be so rude. I said, hi, I'm Kelly, I'm forced adoption exposed. She said, you're what? I said, I'm from forced adoption exposed. I'm watching this case and I've been working as a coach with Josie. She's done amazing, hasn't she? Absolutely amazing. Uh, what a turnaround it's been in these last six weeks, have you noticed? I said, I've been with Josie 
potentially long on for the last six weeks and she's doing an amazing job and I'm making sure that you are being held accountable and the fact that you're using her foster care against her this brings cause for concerns the level of abuse that your system is causing to these children in the first place so what abuse are you going to cause for you know this this baby so anyway I then she said excuse me she said, well, you mean you're watching this case? So of course, I'm watching this case. Do you know what she said to me? What's your VAT number? Get in, money, ching, 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 tax. That's all she was interested in. What was my VAT number? So officially, because it's not running under me switching money around and fundraising, which is what I've got to get to under official capacity so I can pay tax and dodge tax and all that sort of shit, I'm just a rogue. I'm just an outsider. So I have to come in under an official capacity. So what should my hat say? Okay. And what capacity do you think that I would be most beneficial here in Portsmouth? Now, the greatest thing about today is obviously I've been under a goldfish bowl all day. And as you know, on Saturday, I had a referral made to the out of hours care and I've had social services ring me who woke my children up twice. I find it very, very, very difficult to talk to people who don't know me, are just working for an office, who go ch -ch -ch on a computer on my children's names and bring up tick box words that paint a completely different picture with third party information that's been handed over to somebody that is incorrect, false, perjury, even done through hate, mal malice, um, gaslighting, that then the services are stuck in a situation. Do they have to intervene? Is this a hate call? Do, 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 do. But there was a process. When the phone call goes to out and hours, straight away it's usually police come in, child protection, hold until they can go to court or intervene. I knew that through their process, and actually this was Sally who rang me has already broken the law because she has knowingly now passed on that third party information to a further person which has continued to discriminate me so under misfeasance in public office she gets 10 years in prison for that social services are being major sloppy they are being major sloppy with people's personal information we are finding documents all over the place we are finding in children that are being placed vulnerable situations that are being sexually physically emotionally abused and we are finding that situations occurring within foster care that because of the way that the system wraps around it it becomes more about the process and the protocol less the person now I've done some a lot of stuff today because my head is driving me up the wall I probably look like shit I'm not the sort of woman who sits on camera and, and, and does stuff so anyway when Sally rang me on Saturday, obviously, I was very annoyed, very, very, very annoyed. And I was more annoyed with my so-called support system that some cunt out there who knows my full name had decided to put my children in a situation and me where the police were going to be knocking on my door and calling child social care and calling potential child protection while they intervened on me again. We know what this process does. It is to remove the child while investigate the parent. They don't arrest the parent. Now, the problem with this, as I have been saying, to remove a child from a parent, you are dealing with a bond, you are dealing with energy, you are dealing with DNA, you are dealing with a connection. If you've ever tried to put your hand in a bird cage when they have their eggs or um, their chicks are there, if you try doing that, it will fucking have you. Try going up to a lion and taking its cubs. Yeah, Try doing it to the lioness and take its cups. It will have you. Now the problem is, is when you're dealing with my children, you're dealing with the lioness mother in me. Like I said to her on the phone, when you hear a parent who's raising their voice at you, they are not aggressive. They are scared. They are terrified. Your psychology is shit. Your social workers are not qualified in directive coaching and empowerment with people. The social worker said, after I stood my ground with her and told her that I will be serving them with a cease and desist and an injunction for sharing third party false information and continuing to defamate and discriminate me again. Now, 
I've told you all, I'm get a genealogy together. We're going, we're going. This is coming around. This is coming together in the most beautiful, perfect way I have ever seen. I don't know where I'm going to be positioned within all of this at some particular point. But today I am buzzing, mate. I come off video going, get in. They fucking hate it because I'm not scripted, mate. Um, unfortunately, Andrew doesn't actually know me. And this is the beautiful thing about it. I know Andrew not met him but I know what he does but Andrew doesn't know me he's a man he doesn't watch all the other groups do you know what I mean he deals with his parents and I'm not part of that parent alienation and I've never alienated a parent and never would but I am a daughter who has been alienated from her family mm -hmm. so anyway the question she wanted to ask me is what support system have I got so I said what support system are you offering she said well that's not what we're ringing about I said guess because you haven't got a support system to offer is it I said look your system I said please you know, you don't know me, you're just listening to a computer. You have a job to do now, and I will either be considered as failing to work with your system, or, I said, but as we're discussing VAT numbers right here, right now, can I please tell you that your system is running inadequate, under par, and if you were a, a restaurant, health and safety would have shut you down. So I'm very sorry, but you don't have any services that I would require maybe adult social services, but the problem with that funding, blah, 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 all the conversations you've heard from me before, I don't really need to go over it. So anyway, funny that I got that phone call after shaking the hands with the social worker who didn't want to shake my hands. And Josie's going, what just happened, Kelly? She's just absolutely shot me a look. My her head's just gone down. She's just turned on her heel and walked up. In fact, when she got to the lift, she was panicking, walking backwards and forwards. She said, what have you just done? I said, sorry, Josie, but you need protecting now, girl. Um, and it is time now. I was there. The Lord needed me there with you today. And I'm glad I was. I'm glad I knocked on that door. I'm glad that I, I announced my presence. The challenge is now, like I said to her, you make me a service provider, you stop me being a service. So if you make me a service user, you stop me being a service provider because it's a conflict of interest. So if you intervene with my fan, financial um, uh, lifestyle of my children, then you are abusing again. I've just listed on the phone to her 41 years of abuse. You should have heard her face when I told, heard her voice when I said to her, the social worker called me attractive in a street corner kind of way, do not believe her lies. She went, uh, 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 uh. I said, my book comes out on the 13th of December. I said, uh, you now become an official chapter of it and continue systematic abuse. Um, I said, your services is rendered. Now, the problem that I had is my bloody phone froze and I didn't actually put the phone down on her. And the first time I didn't put the phone down on her either, I had to deal with Elijah and Shiloh and I thought she'd put the phone down. Um, and obviously they say parents aren't engaging. Look, they've only got so many words that they can use. They're not funded in everything. They don't understand politics. They don't understand law. They don't not, they're not a solicitor. They're not a barrister. In fact, all a social worker is, break down the word, social worker. It's like general practitioner. A GP is not qualified in any area of expertise. They are a jack of all trades, hence why they are general practitioners. They then signpost you to the specialist that you require. Social worker is a service provider that signposts you to the appropriate services of support. That's how it is meant to mould and model, but it doesn't work like that. They've taken a personal vendetta with me today. Hang your heads in shame, mate. Hang your heads in shame. Because you know what you are doing is abuse to families. Portsmouth Council, I have a love-hate relationship for you. And I know that the journalists from Portsmouth News are watching at the moment. Hello, guys. Love you. Keep going. Let's get some good articles coming out this week about this. Um, and to um, the person who sits, I've got, right, is this paranoia, by the way? Every time I'm coming into my, my, to my block at the moment, my, my lift keeps opening for me. Nobody's pressed the button. Nobody's inside the lift. I'm wondering whether or not one of the rooms in here is a surveillance room and the person is trying to let me know that they they can open and close the lifts for me just because you can have that in a block like that. It would be quite normal to have an intern room in here that's ran by the police that monitors an area like that. That would be normal. That's not paranoia. That happens. Um, but it's really funny because I'll come in with the kids and all of a sudden it will just go ting and it will open. And I'll look around and I'll go, but nobody's pressed the button. It's not even red. 
and um, nobody's in the lift. And it's happening quite a lot recently lately. So as I was in the lift today, Elijah thought it was a bit funny. And um, he thinks that they're opening the door for him. Um, so yes, potentially there could be, an, not for me personally, but because there's a lot of drugs and alcohol and, and violence here and, and deaths and murders. So um, they, they, that could happen. So anyway, today I have been pretty much on the goldfish bowl with the police so i had the police come past today who just nodded and let them know that they weren't intervening with me and walked very 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 fast around me and didn't interact with me and my children and actually left us alone they knew i was there they walked straight past um didn't even come over and find out what was going on what was not we had no police intervention whatsoever today and obviously i'm outside the magistrates courts my son kept going in and out of the courts and um, we had probably up to 10 or 8 social workers in and out, um, judges, barristers. Uh, I saw which judges come out for their lunch and stuff like that. That's quite easy to work out. Um, and then, of course, I've been over to the council office where I've had, you can tell who the police officers are, who the social workers are, and who the solicitors are. So this is all going to get fed back into Portsmouth. One person can make such a difference, but it took for Andrew to come here today. And apparently he's been here before um, in this year, but it took for Andrew for me to go down, obviously have my kids. But there is a rock and a hard place in doing what is right and running as a business. But if I run as a business and run as a service provider, it's gonna put me in a situation where I can't do this. And I love this because I love the fact now that Josie is not gonna lose that baby. I was 99.9% chance, now I'm 100% chance. The only way that they could do this to Josie now would be to call her up on something at the mother and baby unit but hopefully I'm going to be riding all the way now the problem is it means I sacrifice my relationship um, in order to do this um, you know Dean wants me on tour with him with the kids it's my health visitor I'm going to actually speak to my health visitor guys so I'm going to catch off and I'll speak to you in a minute <laughs> 